Good timing. All right, so the last video we did on the surface grinder, uh, we probably left a few things out and we got a few questions. Uh, also, we wanna make a few improvements, so let's get into it. Look at the wrong part of the camera lens. All right, first thing I wanna change is this. Uh, you guys probably noticed it flexed all around in the time lapses of the last uh, surface grinder video. And most of that was caused by the weight transfer of this big, heavy mag chuck. Uh, and it actually wasn't coming from the frame or even this cheap Harbor Freight tool chest, but the casters at the bottom. So we've got a good solution for that. Let's check it out. All right, so here's our solution. I think these are called machine casters. We got them on Amazon for like a hundred bucks. Uh, the set supports about, I think uh, these are 2,400, 2,600 pounds, but they're pretty clever. So you only use the casters when you want to move the machine. Otherwise you spin this guy and the feet come down and press against the floor. So nice and solid, let's put them on. All right, that's a whole lot better. It's not perfect, still wobbles a little bit. The only way to get around that is just to mount it straight to the floor and we're not gonna bother with that. All right, what's next? All right, sorry guys, I'm gonna have to pause the video here just for a second. Uh, if you watched our last video, you'll probably recognize this setup and you know what I'm about to ask. But if you haven't, um, Maker Fair is coming up and they're trying to raise a little bit of money and they have a new program called the Makeathon. Uh, where you get to have a little bit of a competition, they send you a box of parts, you get to build something cool. Again, not really sure what to expect, but it is about to start and we're coming down to the wire to raise a little bit of money. So there's gonna be a link in the description. If you have a few dollars to spare, search for Physics Anonymous and you can donate specifically for our team. If you wanna tag along and see what we're building for Makeathon, um, I'm gonna be doing some live updates on Instagram, so go check us out there. I'll try and uh, film a little bit for YouTube as well so you guys can get the full experience. Uh, but we're really coming down to the wire. I'm gonna be opening the box today and starting, so I'm really excited. So you can go straight to Instagram after this video and see what we're doing. But if you have a few dollars to spare, it really helps support the maker community. So donate a few dollars if you can. All right, enough of that, back to the show. All right, next problem we are having was this cup. All right, the next problem we were having was with this coupler. Uh, it's got the weeble wobbles, uh, in fact, way too much. They make better couplers and we've got a few here. Uh, these, we call them Lovejoy, Connectors, I think um, that's the brand name. I don't know what these are, we got them off Amazon. There's also this style, uh, which are actually really nice, but uh, that's not gonna fit in there. So let's go with that one. Spider couplers, that's the word. Spider, okay. Technical Should I do that again? Much better. This is a 60 grit? Yeah, and the other one is 120. Okay. All right, so I was watching a Solid Rock Machine Shop video, and Steve was saying that the coarser grits actually tend to put a little bit better surface finish. I think the theory is that, you know, it kind of doesn't load up with chips as much, so you're not recutting all the time. Um, either way, I think it's worth a try. This one was 120 grit, this one's 60. Um, let's switch it over. By the way, pulling this off, not the best design. All right, the next thing a few people had questions about was the user interface. Um, to be honest, this is sort of a temporary solution. We we're just trying to get something that would work uh, in time for the video. Uh, we're probably going to replace a lot of this with something a bit more sophisticated, but for now, I'll run you through what we've got. Our first button is obviously an e-stop. That is also the on-off for the machine, so we go ahead and deactivate that. Machine turns on. The whirring sound you hear is the fan up top for the cooling. Uh, this switch controls the course up and down. This switch, this switch adjusts the course up and down movement of the z-axis. So you turn it one way, it goes down. Turn it the other way, it goes back up. Uh, this is really just to get the machine close to the position you're looking for. Let's move it sort of down here. 
So once you've got it close to the position you want, you can move it up and down. Now, because these are stepper motors, they have holding torque, so moving that thing's a little difficult. So that's what the red button is for. That actually disables all the motors of the machine. So you hold that and you can get a nice smooth rotation of that guy. And that'll let you dial in that last little bit right before you touch the surface. It also unlocks all the motors so that I can move these around. Once they're locked, they don't move very much. So let's get it in position and we'll get it close to doing a cut. So one improvement we definitely want to make, the only way to adjust the Y axis at the moment is manually. So we'll probably put a hand crank wheel on here at some point or truthfully the software should probably be doing this. All right, we're about ready to go. And the first thing we're gonna do is turn on the spindle. And that's probably the next improvement we need to make. Let me show you. You've probably noticed by now, uh, there are no spindle controls on this controller and we're gonna fix that. <laughs> right now you have to come to the back of the machine to Right now you have to come back to Right now you have to go to the back of the machine to adjust the spindle. Not exactly very convenient. So we're gonna relocate this servo controller into that other box. And I'll probably have to do some 3D printing for that. But for now, that's how the spindle works. The first thing we do is we set the Z height and we just have it just barely above or barely skim. I think skim's probably a good, good call on that corner. All right, so the way this works is we set the, the back height this, or we, sorry. So the way this works is we set the Z here uh, and then we move it back to the far corner and overshoot a little bit. The uh, X movement is pre-programmed. It's just a, a certain amount there. That's gonna change at some point, but it works fine for now. Make sure the wheel is past the edge of this. We press the go button. And it's gonna move over until it's covered the whole thing. That's telling the machine how far to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, wheel going. And then it just goes. I think that's more chattery. I think that's the same. 
that's the same too. It's the classic, yeah. we change like six things at one time and see no difference at all. Yeah. That's the way it goes well, sometimes. Well, it was more consistent on down feed. It was, yeah, that's true. So that's the new side. You can see a little bit of chatter. Of course, this is a little marked up. And yeah, you know what, I think, well, it's a little hard to tell just because it's a little duller. I think it's actually the same chatter. It's just a little easier to see on the fresh side than it is on the dull side. I don't know, comment below, what do you think? All right, let's try slowing down the Z movement. That might actually be a little bit better than we had before. Uh, not by much, but just a little bit. But I want to talk for a second about the measurement here because, you know, when you when you get down into the tenths, that's uh, that's 0 .0001 of an inch. It gets a little abstract. So to give you a little bit of an idea here, here's a piece of receipt paper, which is quite a bit thinner than a regular sheet of paper, and it's almost two thou thick. Okay, so we're talking a lot less than that. In fact, a red blood cell is about three tenths. So we're actually, if there was a, a red blood cell sitting on top of that, we'd see it. Uh, yeah, well, we'd probably crush it. <laughs> Smear it. Yeah. In fact, even if I were to just take a Sharpie and draw a line there, um, that's about a tenth. So, it, of course, we can't measure that because this would scrape right through it, but... We're really, I mean, you're talking about the thickness of the ink of a Sharpie on the metal. And that's how accurate this is. So we're pretty happy with that. One cool thing you get about having two really flat surfaces is uh, the air actually has a hard time escaping. So if I set this down, you see that little bit of a skate? It's actually working as an air bearing. And then it just, once the air is finally out, it actually sucks down. So if I pull it off quick, and here it pops out as the air floods back in. That's so cool. Cool. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. Okay, uh, Relentless Homesteading wants to know how many hours we have in the lathe rebuild. Well, the shorter answer to that is probably way too many. Uh, of course, we're filming it for YouTube, so you have to factor that time in too. It takes a lot longer to film. Uh, but he wants to know if we have more or less than 20 hours into it. For sure, more than 20. I think that's going to be the case with just about any really old machine tool you pick up. Uh, I mean, ours was like 60 years old, so that's kind of what you expect. Uh, but it's well worth it. I wish you luck finding one. Patrick Kelly says, great video. Uh, what are you gonna be using for the Z-axis motor? All the motors on the CNC are gonna be clear path motors by Technic. Um, we actually got a pretty awesome deal through them and their support has been great so far. Uh, so I'd highly recommend them. Uh, we're gonna go into a lot more detail once we put them on the CNC. So stick around for that. Steve, just Steve says, uh, glad you took my comment to heart. Since I know you're listening, I forgot something in that comment. He says, uh, thanks for all the videos and good work. Also, how does my two-liner get something, something, something? Thanks, Steve. Ryan, why don't you take this comment? Wait a minute. Where is Ryan? Nathan says, whoa, you guys are in Orlando. Yeah, but we should do a meet and greet or something, and if nothing else, we're going to be at Maker Fair in November. Fast Farmer says, it's a big mistake, uh, but I'll watch with interest, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, that other stuff is absolutely right. Uh, we have a plan for most of it, specifically the spindle stuff. Yes, if you had a good one, this one would max out at like 4,000 RPM. We don't have a good one, so we have to change pretty much everything. Just keep watching. The Jebediah says, uh, honestly, after the horror stories I've heard about Tormach, uh, anything seems like a better option. 
Yeah, it's funny. I hear this comment a lot, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watch AV, and he has nothing but bad things to say about Tormach. But, like, honestly, I was super impressed with the machine. It's not perfect. It's got its flaws. But, you know, if you're comparing it to, like, a Mazak or a Big Haas, I mean, that's like saying a Civic sucks because my Ferrari is way better. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, we can go into all the pluses and minuses about them. They're definitely not perfect. Uh, in another video, if you want, let me know in the comments. Your son says, if you watch this channel, the only question you have to ask yourself is, do they know how to turn the camera on? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that, you know, that's a good point. The record button is right here.